Okay, great. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a legend back in the house. We have Dr. Brooke Goldner. She was recently on, she reversed her lupus and she is changing the world, saving lives. She is incredible. So today we're going to talk about oxalates because she has inspired me and many other people since our interview to get on the green smoothie train. And they're just changing my life, making me feel amazing, especially with the omegas, with the flax oil. And I've actually never had so many comments in my life about oxalates. All these comments like, girl, you're crazy. You think you're being healthy. Just wait. Something's going to happen to you. And I'll just give an, a comment for an example, and then we can get into it with your knowledge and expertise. So this is a sample of what I am getting on the daily, maybe on the hour right now. And this says from Inner Circle, ha ha, wait till she finds out about all the oxalates. You think that is detoxifying? You are pouring tons of toxins into your system. So if we could start with maybe for somebody who doesn't know, I think most people don't do know, but if you could just explain briefly what are oxalates just to get started. Yes, absolutely. And, and thanks for, for having me on to talk about this because it does pop up and, and uh, it's just the newest kind of counter argument to eating healthy. And on one hand, it makes me laugh. On the other hand, it makes me cry uh, because it's just a lot of mythology. And uh, so it's great to be able to, to help people understand this. So I'm just going to go after this topic here. I, I woke up ready. Like, let's just, let's just talk about oxalates and then we can stop talking about oxalates. So, so the reason people talk about them, right, uh, is that one in 10 people in the, in the U.S. get kidney stones. And the most common type of kidney stone is an oxalate kidney stone. Now, also, fruits and vegetables, especially certain vegetables like spinach, beet greens, and chard, are high in oxalates. And so what some folks are doing is they're then drawing the conclusion, you're eating foods high in oxalates, one in 10 people get kidney stones, or you're going to get you know, kidney stones because you're eating high oxalate foods. But let me ask you this, Jillian, do you think that one in 10 people in the U.S. getting kidney stones, that one in 10 people in the U.S. are juicing and drinking green smoothies? Yeah, no way. No chance. <laughs> Good point. No, actually, uh, and they've known this, like even back when I was in medical school, we we're talking 20 years ago, we were taught that what gives you a risk of kidney stones is dehydration and high intake of animal protein. Now that makes much more sense, right? Because definitely more people in the U.S. are overdosing in animal protein are dehydrated. And that makes a lot more sense. So, you know, it's, it's a false equivalency where people are saying, oh, you know, if you're eating high oxalate foods, you're going to give yourself these problems. So let's just talk about it. So yes, they're found in fruits and vegetables, mostly in, you know, the highest level is in spinach, as I said, beet greens, chard. And so when people make smoothies, a lot of times they use spinach. And so that's where the concern has come from. But really, when it comes to diet, we don't actually absorb that much of the oxalates from our diet. Uh, very little of it ends up, we absorb it in our gut and then it'll come out through the urine. And, and the fear is if you have too much in your urine, it's going to crystallize into these stones, right? But they have actually done studies looking at this where they have increased the dietary intake by 25 times. And there was only just a mild increase in the urinary concentration. So not that much of it is coming from the diet. Now, the body also creates oxalates as a byproduct of different chemical reactions happening. And so they've also studied this. What they did is they said, okay, if dietary oxalate could be causing, and dietary oxalate, I'm meaning what you eat, right? So if eating things high in oxalate might cause kidney stones, then we'll take people who get kidney stones and take all the vegetables out of their diet and see what happens. And you know what happened? Kidney stones went up. Wow. Why? Wow. Yes. So why? Right. So I'm getting all sciencey with you so that people can really yeah. understand. So when you eat lots of animal products, it causes your urine to be more acidic. Mm -hmm. And when urine is more acidic, it's going to form more stones. When you eat lots of vegetables and fruits, your urine is more alkaline and alkaline urine does not form as much stones. So in reality, people who eat more fruits and vegetables have less kidney stones, not more. And it's actually been tested and proven and just in these tests. I mean, I, you know, the reason you know who I am is because thousands of people all over the world have done our hyper nourishment program, which is an overdose, an overdose in things like green leafy vegetables, right? And what happened? They reversed diseases that should be incurable. Like for myself, I'm lupus free now, 17 years. I eat over a pound of greens a day, never had a stone. Uh, in fact, it healed my kidney issue. I had chronic kidney disease that went away 
because I started overdosing in nutrition. So if it really was the case that people eating enormous amounts of leafy greens would result in people getting oxalate overdose and stones, it wouldn't just be good by autoimmune disease. It would be good by autoimmune hello kidney stone, right? It'd be yeah. <laughs> my, whole, my whole community would be like, well, my arthritis is gone, but I'm bleeding in my urine, right? Who did yeah. Not, right. I have not seen that over the thousands of people I've worked with. I can think of two people who've had kidney stones, which is actually more like the general population level, not like a, you, you know, you would, you would see something different. So what we see in results is that actually when people are getting kidney stones, they're on high protein, animal protein diets, they're dehydrated. They don't eat fruits and vegetables. Now there was a case that triggered some of this and, you know, the people who are, you know, pro keto carnivore, they're always looking for ways to make it seem stupid to eat your vegetables, even though our own grandmothers knew vegetables should be eaten. Right. So there was this one case where there was a woman who was morbidly obese. She had gastric bypass surgery. She was on tons of antibiotics and she decided she wanted to get healthy and do a juice cleanse, which good on her, right? Yeah. It's probably the best decision she had made. And she went on a juice cleanse, primarily juiced spinach, and she got a kidney stone. And so they published the case that yeah. someone juicing and having spinach as her juice got a kidney stone, a one person case, right? Yeah. And so then the, one of the theories they proposed was the high oxalate intake precipitated this kidney stone. But here's the reality. I already taught you all the reasons why that's not the case. But there are certain things medically that can make you more likely to get a kidney stone. And one of them is gastric bypass surgery. Wow. So she had gastric bypass surgery, which raises her rate or her risk of kidney stone. She also had high levels of antibiotic intake. Now, the reason that's the case is we actually have a bacteria in our gut that absorbs and, and digests and gets rid of oxalates called oxalobacter. And yeah. if you're taking high amounts of antibiotics, you might have murdered and killed off some of that bacteria. And if you can't destroy oxalate, you're going to absorb more, which raises your risk of kidney stone. Interesting. So here's a woman who was high risk for kidney stones because she had totally mutilated her bowels through gastric bypass. You can tell I'm not a fan of that surgery. Yeah. And was exposed to large amounts of antibiotics. And then she ate a bunch of spinach and then she got a kidney stone. So is it possible if she had done kale instead of spinach, she wouldn't have had a kidney stone? Maybe, but chances are at some point she was already going to have it. And there are people who genetically are more prone to it. That's the other part of it is there are some people who genetically, and they're very low percentage of the population. I actually talk about this in my book of autoimmune disease. Yeah. I have a chapter about oxalates just because this topic won't go away. Yeah. We talk about all this data and detail for people who want to read it and have it for themselves. But um, there are people who are genetically predisposed, very low percentage of the population. And again, they found it's not related to diet, that they don't need to overdose and spinach to get stones. They're going to get them anyway. Yeah. So really, that's not the issue. And, and the biggest thing I want to say about this before I breathe again <laughs> is that this is a distraction. People in our world are not suffering from overdose in spinach. They are suffering from malnourishment and being poisoned by overdosing in animal products and processed junk. I won't even call it food, right? They're overdosing in junk that's killing them. I mean, the causes of death, the primary causes of death in our, in our world are caused by nutrition, heart attacks, diabetes, cancers, autoimmune diseases. These are caused by chronic malnourishment and eating the wrong junk that's killing people, not from eating too much spinach. So mm -hmm. it's really just a distraction. We have to stop distracting ourselves with theoretical problems that might come from eating a lot of spinach and actually focus on the real problem, which is that people are malnourished and they're chronically ill and it's killing them. So yeah. I just wanted to make sure that we focus on that because that's the real issue. Well said, you're a powerhouse. So now I feel like so I don't have to worry. I've been consuming two 32 ounce green smoothies a day. There's a lot of spinach in it too. And my green juice, and I've never felt better. Do you Good. think, yeah, yeah. They're awesome. you, mine right here. Yeah. I'm going to have this while you ask your question. Yeah. So I've learned a lot here and I just thought no one better to have on to discuss this than you. So do you think if somebody's consuming the standard American diet and then they decide to add in these green smoothies, maybe can the oxalates then could this be problematic? This of something like this green smoothie, if they're consuming like you know, the standard American diet or no? 
No, because as, as I was saying, it will actually reduce the risks because consuming more vegetables. So, so when I teach people how to do these smoothies, it's, it's a protocol that I call hypernourishment, which is an overdose in nutrition designed to correct a lifetime of malnourishment in the shortest period of time possible. And what we find is even when people add these smoothies to a diet that's otherwise inflammatory, their health gets better, right? Yeah. They get better. Constipation goes away, you know, which improves mood. Right. Yeah. And, then, uh, you know, blood pressure comes down, cholesterol comes down, gut health goes up. So remember what I said, how alkaline urine will have less stones. So by increasing vegetable intake for the majority of people, increasing vegetable intake through these smoothies will actually reduce their risk of kidney stones. You know, my husband used to get kidney stones before we met. Wow. And he was a bodybuilder guy, right? Yeah. And he was eating bodybuilder diet. So he was eating tons of meat every day and he was getting kidney stones. And I can tell you, since the day he switched to eating plant-based and the man, he drinks one to two blenders of green smoothie a day. He has never had a kidney stone. Wow. So it makes sense, right? Eating large amounts of animal products, kidney stones, eating large amounts of overdosing in nutrition, especially yeah. no kidney stones. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Amazing. And do you think there's any other symptoms people get with kidney with uh, high oxalates? If like they have like high oxalates in the body and their body is having problems, are there any other symptoms besides the kidney stones you think that pop up? There's, there's a lot floating around, but it's all theoretical. Mm -hmm. And I don't like to live in the world of theoretical hypothesis because that's when people are wrong. So I, I see a lot of folks making conclusions now, which I just don't see to be true, especially when I work with them, where they'll say, oh, you know, I'm having this issue and I noticed that I have it when I had, you know, a smoothie or something. And so then I looked it up and then I saw that they have oxalates. And so therefore I think oxalates is causing this problem. So it's kind of one of those circuitous, let's go on a path in the dark with like leaves in our face and try to figure out where we are. Yeah. I think people draw a lot of conclusions and it's just, you know, it's really the same as how this whole oxalate discussion got started, right? Is that, you know, somebody did a juice fast and then she got stones. Must yeah. be the juice. And it's like, uh, no, uh, let's talk about her previous diet, her, her gastric bypass, her antibiotic. Right? Yeah. So it's kind of like that. It, it's a problem that people have where, where they, they try to make a connection between two things that happen to be happening at the same time, but they're not necessarily connected. So is it a possibility? that people with oxalate issues might have other issues besides kidney stones. It's a possibility. It's not really something that's documented heavily in the medical world. Yeah. Um, and while I am, you know, very much uh, pushing people to use nourishment, so they need less doctors. I am a doctor and I'm a scientist. And so I really need to have facts to support things. And, you know, having done this work for a long time, uh, I've never really had a problem where it was like, oh, oxalates are an issue recently, because this has become a buzzword, people are now thinking more like maybe that's what it is. But again, the majority of the problems people have are from under consuming leafy greens, not over consuming. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and was... again, if any community would have health problems from over consuming uh, leafy greens, it'd be mine. <laughs> and yeah, they're not. Exactly. That's what I was like, I have to have you on. No, this has been amazing. And if you feel there's one other thing I really want to ask you about, but before we get into that, is there anything else you feel like we missed on oxalates that we, that you want to get out there? Do you feel like we've covered it all? I think so. No, I think what we need to get out there about oxalates is that we need to stop talking about oxalates. Like, yeah. There should be a go, go Popeye movement, not the opposite, but yeah. just, I mean, listen, people want to latch onto things that confirm what they hope to be true. You know, if somebody is overweight and sick, and then they go, oh, I don't even like salads. I don't like greens. And she's saying I have to eat those to get better. And then they see some things like, oh, don't eat greens. They're bad for you. Oh, yeah, that sounds better. <laughs> Let yeah. me just eat my hot dog. No, just, I know. Oh, and people are scaring people away from those greens. It's crazy. And it, it's just they're so they make you feel amazing. And they're just so great for our body. OK, so thanks for putting that to rest. And you are so knowledgeable. You are so credible. So, and you're so awesome, a happy, bubbly, amazing person. When I had you on, Fueled everybody- Fueled by greens. Fueled by greens. That's what I'm drinking all day long while I work and it works. And I've been doing this a long time and it's incredible. Yeah, you're right. The, the, the energy you get, it's just fabulous. 